Yo, what's good, guys? It's your boy CM from Triff Gaming. Today's video very, very, very simple. It's gonna be Pendulums versus. We're gonna base a whole bunch of random decks, and so you guys can see how to play. I'm gonna show you guys the theory behind playing this deck and why Pendulums are the best deck. So, the rest of the month, all you're gonna see on the channel is very simple. Just me doing a bunch of randoms to show you guys why Pendulums are the best deck. All right. Before we get started, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. I had the last four, the last four videos, guys. We had a total of like. 50, 60,000 guys watching the last four videos, but I only have 11,000 subscribers. So I know I have a bunch of you guys that are watching that aren't even subscribed. So support your boy, make a channel subscribe. I will highly, highly appreciate it. I want to bring this channel to 15,000 by my birthday on November 1st, no matter what. Then we're going to have a crazy, crazy surprise special for that. But anyways, without further ado, we're going to get right into the video. Pendulums versus everyone. So the very first video, you're sorry, the very first duel is going to be us destroying uh, Invoked. All right, so we're going to be playing Invoked. Uh, Invoked did get... Uh, they didn't get touched on the ban list, to be honest. Uh, yeah, maybe like uh, Hoenig went and won, but... They barely got touched. Uh, they just got the new Alistair card. Uh, so they, 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 they're they decent. A lot of people think they might do some damages format, but that is uh, very mistakenly... Uh, wrong extremely wrong invoked still suck all right sorry if you like invoked but they suck maybe be like an engine like maybe throwing the invoked engine in pendulums yeah then they're gonna be good but anyways i'm gonna go right into it so i want you guys to see this play i'm about to do here the theory behind playing new pendulums this is this i specifically picked this one because it shows you so much about how to play this deck so look at my first move chronograph effect right but i put time gazer in the scale not on the field. But Steven, that's your only turbo card. Why would you do that? Fury time, boys. Electrum does not matter anymore. Electrum is not part of the game plan anymore. It's just a bonus. It's like, you just you don't need it. You don't need it. It's good if you go Electrum pre-pen summon. It's great. You could really extend your plays. But if I, chron look at this example here. If I use Chronograph, put Gazer on the field, Next play, you'll normal summon one of these, right? So I'll normal summon, let's say, Dark Worm. I'll get Dark Worm, get Gate Zero. And then they go Soger the Electrum. They impermanence the Electrum. They do anything to the Electrum. My play is done. My play will then suck. Jackal can't come out, already normal summon. My play will suck if I got hand trapped. Big time. And you can't even do much after that. Use your normal summon, Bambuku. You can't get a Totem Bird out. The most you could do is a rank 4 play. Just one, to one interruption, done. You, you can't do anything. Uh, no, we're not going to be doing that because we don't want to get stopped by hand traps. We want hand traps not to be irrelevant. So I want you guys to see the next form of play I'm going to do where it's guaranteed two interruptions, no matter what. So this, because that way I only had one interruption, but if Electrum resolved, I'd have three. Now look at this. If they hand trap me right now, if they hand trap me, if I put time gazer onto the field, uh, if they hand trap my Electrum, I'd only have one interruption. Now. I'm gonna oh sorry, but if they, it does not get hand trapped, I could have three. So if I don't get interruption by gate, uh, if my electrum does not get get interrupted, I have three interruptions. If it does get interrupted, I have one. This way, if my electrum does get hand trapped, I have two interruptions. If it doesn't get hand trapped, I have three. So it's literally the exact same in terms of reward. You still have three interruptions, and they're gonna be the exact same interruption. But in terms of risk, if you make an electrum after your pen summon in this situation, you're guaranteed to have two interruptions and not one. All right. In fact, so clearly this guy's a noob because he attempted to ash my wisdom and I just died laughing at that. Like I literally LOL. Like I literally as making it, I literally laughed out loud. Like I even laughed my ass off almost. Like anyways, uh, I was all, I was LOLing and then uh, anyways, we pen something. Just to not show you guys what I was talking about. We now uh, get to pen our whole field regardless of what he had. He's going to ash our Dark Worm uh, because what else is he going to uh, do? And I, I a chain blocks in my Bambuku would resolve. Uh, what else is he going to hand drop anyways? So now if you look at it, even through a hand trap now, even through a hand trap, uh, we're going to put up three interruptions. So uh, if we, let's say that was a ghost ogre and he ogred our Electrum or he impermanence our Electrum, we only have one interruption. But this way you literally have two interruptions and you can still make an Electrum. So we're going to go into Electrum anyways. So we go into Electrum anyways. Uh, we're going to use a Chrono on the Wisdom, go into an Electrum. Now if the Electrum gets hand trapped here, if the Electrum gets hand trapped, we said we didn't normal summon, right? Because we didn't make an Electrum pre-summon. So we normal a Nekomata. We get a Totem Bird. We have a Totem Bird and a Jackal of Electrum gets uh, interrupted. And just like that, we have two interruptions through two hand traps. If he has an interruption, win-win for us. If he doesn't interrupt us now, we could go for three interruptions with Chrono. Get that, get level four summon. You know what I mean? Like, more pluses. Like, 
Uh, sometimes Electrum before your Pensum is not the best play. All right, so don't forget that. That's the theory there. If you didn't understand the last part, just rewind. It's extremely, extremely important. So, yeah, the the send isn't even important. Like we're not running rescue hamster, even though we probably will. Like has, hamster might have been nice to have, like, and just in case. But we're gonna send. Uh, we're thinking what to send. Uh, we're gonna send a morbid sloth just in case it'll come up in the. We know we don't know what he's playing at this point. For next turn, just sometimes pen summoning a sloth is auto win. So having a sloth there is good. Like you're not gonna add it. You don't have another electrum. So what you send now is uh, pretty irrelevant. So. We're going to use Electrum's effect to pop that to get a Chronograph to Special Necromata. We have a bunch of level 4s we didn't go through yet in the deck. Like, there's a high, high chance of drawing a level 4. The whole deck is literally level 4. So, uh, we draw level 4. Uh, that's why we did that play. And now we can have 3 interactions. We didn't normal summon yet. Necromata will not get its effect because uh, it's a when effect. It'll only get its effect if Electrum doesn't draw. So, if Electrum does not draw, then it'll get its effect. 90% uh, well, of the time that is the case, but not in this situation. So, we go into Totem Bird. We're normal summon the Razor because we have a bunch of level 4. We're going to draw one. We go into Dweller and boom. Through an Ash, we have Dweller, Jackal, Totem Bird with a random chronograph just chilling. So, through, 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 I repeat, through an Ash, we have three interruptions. After, and this was without an Electrum pre-Pen Summon. So, notice that new game plan before is three Electrums before your Pen Summon. Now it's zero Electrum before your Pen Summon. But one Electrum sometimes might be the right call depending on your hand. But zero election before pen summon versus three. What a difference in game plan. You see that? Now, uh, Dweller, Jackal, Totem. Honestly, I really wanted to go Tornado Dragon. I think J uh, Dweller is going to be underrated this format, uh, uh, overrated this format because not many people are playing Goki anymore. I don't know why. I still think it's the best deck after Pendulum. But he Gamma Seals my Totem Bird, which uh, does suck. But uh, it, 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 honestly, the best play was, was Tornado. And just like, boom, Meltdown. What a Tornado that. And we would have won the game. But uh, we're still won. Anyways, continue watching. So Dweller is now pretty useless against him. Just stops the search. He has Mech Knights. So he goes, uh, puts down the Jackal. Uh, uses the fact it's a bad Mech Knight. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to save my Jackal for the Alistair. And he just attacks my Jackal. That's all good. Because uh, I did not want to, uh, I did not want to get a Purgatory Hood and lose my whole field. So uh, that was the only thing he could have done. I was going to stop. Clearly he didn't have another invocation. I was going to stop that. Uh, I was going to stop the Alistair effect uh, with Jackal. He goes Macabre. I Dweller before uh, the Macabre, just in case he's in vacation. All I need to draw is any monster and Dragon Shrine. Uh, extremely unfortunate. I hate drawing Dragon Shrine late. That's why I play 60 cards. Also, a chance to draw uh, cards like that when you don't want to draw them, like Cerberus when you have scales complete. Uh, but now we're going to attempt to use Electrum Effect. So in this situation, you got to look at it. If, if Dweller was Tornado Dragon, yeah, we won the game. Uh, but that's fine. We're just going to win just a little later. So now you got to look at the situation. Okay. I want to use Electrum's effect. I don't have another Electrum. Uh, what am I going to do? I, have to, I was baiting him. I was waiting. I was baiting into I want, uh, using Electrum first. Because typically, they don't, they don't negate the first thing, right? Because they think, oh, definitely more crazy stuff is going to happen. So you got to go. If this is in real life, it will be easier to bait him. But it's online. So it's a little tougher. Uh, so I use I wait a little. And then use Electrum right off the bat. Uh, he negates it with Macabre. Uh, I would have done the same. But there was a, was a chance he wasn't going to negate Electrum's effect. We could have got a scale. We would have won the game. Uh, because if Shrine was, if Dragon Shrine was any monster, uh, we won. I uh, get a normal board load, like anything. We had so many plays. Uh, obviously, the pen summon part. But now I was hoping he thought I had a high skill. Because if I had a high skill and he negated it, he lost. Uh, then he does stop it. I'm looking at my plays. I could do a, I could make a Nightmare Phoenix, discard, destroy the back row, uh, Dweller. How, uh, stop the Alistair, then he'd be top decking, and then I'll draw a high skill and win Dark Room next turn. Like, that was a plan, but like, you know what? I'm just gonna set the shrine. Uh, I regret setting it. I was thinking, setting it like a bluff. Maybe he'll think it's something like the trap card. Uh, I thought maybe he'll think it's a pen graph, trap card, pop oath. Like, that's what I was thinking, but uh, later I realized I was so stupid because I could have kept it and just use it as fodder to use Phoenix to pop the uh, the other set. But I dweller standby. Uh, just, uh, I knew he could Macabre, but that's okay with Macabre's because he'll only have one Macabre then anyways, and it'll be useless. Then he gets, uh, yeah, he gets that. So, it, it, it keeps progressing. We had a bad top deck. We're in a bad situation right now, but, uh, I still firmly believe that we could win this game. Uh, he goes into Alistair. Uh, then he's gonna go, yeah, he's gonna just link into the other Alistair. He's gonna Invocation. He's gonna bring up Purgatrio, and I'm pretty sure he's just gonna, uh, attack with my stuff, which is fine. He's left with a Purgatrio, and I'm left with... I, all I need, honestly, just a high skill, and I win the duel. Pen summoning a Jackal. Uh, if I get clear Purgatrio, Pen summon a Jackal with counters, I win the duel. So, in situations like this, or a Sloth. A Sloth as well. 
because invocation will be useless. And then he uses that one, brings out uh, Raijin, uh, attacks for 2200. And we are du uh, dueling a noob here, but uh, whatever. Uh, so I use Dark Worm off the bat. Uh, this is hilarious. He's going to die laughing. He literally thinks that Raijin negates Dark Worm. So I started dying laughing. I'm just like, bro, Raijin does not negate Dark Worm. I was losing my shit. I was just dying laughing. And uh, anyways, I had the Dark Worm anyways. I'm like, okay, call a judge. <laughs> like This guy thought Raijin negates Dark Worm because he sets it face down. Uh, call, I'm like, call a judge if you're right. I'll give you the match. Like, I was dying laughing. And then uh, Iris, pop the zero. Uh, get the skill eight. Uh, boom, now we're good. Now we're going to pen summon. Uh, we're going to use that. So I'm literally going to just pen summon the jackal. I'm going to pen summon the jackal, activate the shrine just to give it a counter. And then uh, keep attacking. And uh, it's going to literally just be uh, jackal beatdown or sloth beatdown. Because Sloth could get over the Raijin and Sloth against uh, against Alistair's, uh, against uh, Invoke decks is hilarious. So, we're just going to pen summon a Sloth, attack Raijin, and then keep attacking every turn and win. Because they can't do anything, and we're going to keep drawing monsters, we auto win. So, we're in a situation now that we win the duel. Uh, Judge says that I was right, obviously, because, you know, like, he has uh, more than one brain cell. And then, uh, the guy was so pissed, he just left the duel. Uh, he was pissed, so he left. Uh, so I just showed what I was going to do. It was Jacko, but really the best play was Sloth. I was going to go Sloth, just attack the Raijin, and uh, from then on, you just continue. That's how you beat uh, Invoke now. You, you uh, just go Sloth or Jackal when you bring them down to low cards. Just keep attacking, 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 and win. And uh, that's it. So we, we won the first one. We won the first duel. Obviously, he just left, and he was a noob, so we didn't want to message him play again. Next, we're going to be playing my friend, Kill Switch. He's my boy. He's been my boy since day one. Uh, so now we're going to, even before I was Trip Gaming, back when I was a decksmith for the OGs that knew who I was when I was a decksmith. But anyways... We go first here, look at our hand, it's a pretty good hand, uh, but again, having a lot of turbo cards, uh, new format is not the best, uh, so I'll, I have a cool play with Sloth, Sloth is incredibly good, man, you can go 3 Interruption, like have Sloth, Vortex, Jackal is very easy to do, but uh, we didn't have the right scales to do it, so we had to go be a little crafty here, I think the better play was uh, Chronograph Jackal, if you get the theory there, as little, uh, I summoned the Bambuku, I don't, uh, was, I don't know why, actually that was a really wrong play, I should have gone special chrono special jackal and then normal bambuku and then jackal would have been able to stop a hand trap but i don't know why it didn't do that i actually have no idea it was the best play to stop hand traps but i i did it anyways i knew my friends playing pendulums this is a one-on-one -on -one pendulum match by the way we're both testing so you guys get to see the best of both worlds some crazy stuff are going on in this match uh it does anyways we go electrum the best play would have been jackal to stop a hand trap but i knew i wasn't playing this anyways i went electrum I uh, send a zero because we want sevens in there. Uh, you got we got a little crafty here. Uh, you want to resolve a Morphid Sloth at the very end by a normal summon. You cannot resolve it uh, before, and you cannot tribute summon over an absolute because a vortex won't come out. So uh, you got to be really crafty. Uh, so we penned out. That's why we penned certain things and kept certain things in hand. You got to be crafty. So we made sure to make uh, the whole point of it. If you have a sloth, sloth and vortex is almost auto win against so many decks unless they open the absolute nuts. So, uh, we go, the, the game plan is link away the absolute, go into vortex, and now you gotta be crafty. If you notice, we haven't used our, we went out of our way, sending like a zero out of all things with Electrum. We went out of our way to make sure not to summon a sloth until the very end. So, uh, or save the Electrum effect till the very end, but we had to use it to get a, a scale. So, we save the normal summon. Now we're gonna tribute the land that, that's useless for a sloth, and boom. Vortex, Jackal, Sloth. I don't know any deck that could out that. Like, like, like yeah, you're going to need, like, two even leads or three more type of thing like that. But uh, a, a lock of you can't use your, you cannot use your extra deck, like a floodgate on legs in a Morphid Sloth. Like, you need a player can spread some monsters from the extra deck. Like, you basically have an emptiness for the extra deck. You, ha you have, a, a like, a scythe out. Like, like you have the artifacts out. Like, it's very tough for this. Plus, you have Vortex to protect it and a Jackal to protect it. So... This is a little soft lock that Sloth allows. You go out of your way to do it all the time. If you ever use your normal summon to make an Electrum, you, just, you could send a Sloth, add the, uh, send a Sloth to Electrum, add the Sloth, pen summon, and tribute summon the Sloth. Or if you don't if you don't have access to a Vortex, you could literally just pen summon the Sloth and have your one-card interruption. So, like, Sloth Avion is another thing that's crazy. And if you draw the Avion, you just add the Sloth to the Electrum, and it's lit. But this guy opens Absolute Nuts. Look at this. He opens Absolute Dream. Pen called Dark Worm, the Absolute Dream. So I was thinking long and hard. I'm like... Nah, he's gonna like he's playing the best deck. No deck can out this with pendulums. This guy is pen called Dark Worm. Uh, he could easily get poison and, and fang. Now, even though poison and fang don't die under pen call, they can still activate their pendulum effects. So sloth can easily die by any of those. 
and they won't like they won't even leave the scale. But I'm like, you know what? I have to vortex negate that. Like 100, I have to negate that. I can't let him. Uh, I cannot let him add poison and fang that will destroy sloth like that. So, uh, so we have to negate the pen call. And then uh, after that, he's gonna dark worm. We have to negate the pen call. I wanted to let it go to give Jackal counters, but we had to let it. We had to negate it. Like it's 100 percent without a doubt. It would have been too good. Then he worms into zero. Then he uh, battle phase. He attacks the worm with the sloth, uh, and then triggering chronograph. Unfortunately, Jackal had no counters. Uh, would have negated that. And then Janky attacks Sloth. He opened the nuts. He opened Pankal, Worm, Chrono, and a uh, monster big enough to 2200 attack, which is just Janky. Incredible. Good for him. I'm happy for him. He's playing the best deck in the world. So I'm not surprised that the best deck in the world beat uh, beat that lock. So, But it's not over yet. We still have a Jackal. So he has to go into Electrum. He has to fix his scales now, uh, I assume. So he has a zero. I'm pretty sure he has a low scale in his hand. Uh, like a low scale magician. So he gets the wisdom. And now Electrum, uh, he has to activate Electrum Effect to get the Wisdom, or else he can't Pendulum Summon. And Jackal got a counter from the zero, because it's the only thing he could use. And then, I, we boom. We negated it, the lock was too good. We negated it. The deck's just too good. The deck is too powerful, and it cannot be stopped, alright? it is. The Pendulums are too powerful. Another one now. This is an unbelievable match. This, this game might just be my favorite game I played this for, man. Like, it's an absolutely incredible game. Uh, he opens the nuts for this one again. We both did like well, not the nuts, but every hand looks the same. Like uh, aside from pen call dark, uh, pen call dark worm, every hand is uh, as broken as the every other hand. Like they all look the exact same now. Like uh, like like you don't play Kepler anymore. You're not gonna have crazy triple electrum hands, but now in the new format, all hands generally look the same. Like that's why 60 cards, 40 card pendulum make no difference because you're adding 20 cards that literally do the exact same as the other 40. Like it does not make much of a difference. Boom, he, uh, he got Hamster there, crazy, I absolutely love, man, what uh, what a deck, I love when you have, uh, Hamster's amazing when you have access uh, for both Wisdoms, he gets Wisdom, like that's an incredible play right there, uh, so I do rate him for that, uh, he's learning from the best, uh, it's going out of your way, just for you guys uh, who didn't catch on there, it's going out of your way to put double Wisdom in the extra, to resolve a Rescue Hamster, to add double Wisdom back. It's an incredible play, and uh, I really I rate that I rate that play. Then he has Metaltron there. He opens uh, really, really good. Boom, Tornado Dragon, and just like that, boom. So I got to deal with Tornado Dragon, Double Jackal. Uh, you know what? Du uh, double Jackal, Tornado is very tough to get over, especially with Zephyr Metaltron. He has both scales up, like both scales. He has cards in hand. This is incredibly tough to get rid of. Incredibly tough. Absolutely incredibly tough. Like... Look at how much plus he is right now. He's going to start. He has double Jackal on Tornado. Next turn, he's going to start with a card from Oath Dragon. A card he draws. A card from Zephyr Metal. He's going to have five cards and complete scales. Like with a Dark Worm. This is why Pendulums are the best deck. That's three interruptions. Good interruptions. Two negates and a Destroy Spell or Trap. He's, he has full scales for next turn. And he's going to start with five cards. Like That's absolutely incredible. So, we're going to see what the Penga can do to out this. So... Jackal has no counters, but we can't do anything around it. We're, we're going to have to give it counters. So, out of the bow, we're just going to drag a shrine. Uh, he gets counters. We have to. Worm to get zero. He negates it because uh, it's an easy Electrum. It's a turbo card, and it's another card in my hand to pen summon with. Uh, so, he negates the Dark Worm. Uh, and then I go Scott Iris to protect my skills. Scott Iris is incredible this format. Absolutely incredible. So many people are going to play Twin Twisters. So many people are going to go first turn to you know, Dragon, especially if they know you're playing Pendulum. Scott Iris just protects the skills. It's like a... It's like a guinea pig. It just protects you, and you get any skill you want. You get a one-card interruption. You get a level seven. Scott Iris is absolutely incredible. I don't like. I absolutely love that card. Uh, I'm gonna play more cards that uh, trigger when Iris pops it, but Iris is amazing. So we wisdom Fang. Uh, obviously, I wanted to wisdom into poison type of thing. Iris to poison, but obviously Tornado would have stopped the Iris. So Iris, basically, I know it's getting popped. So he pops it with Tornado, and here's where I actually screw up. What I uh, should have done at this point is I should have used Black Fang effect on the Jackal. I got a huge misplay. Absolutely huge misplay. Backbang uh, effect on the... Oh, wait. Sorry. I should have Pendulum Summoned one level four from... Uh, I should have Pendulum Summoned a Dark Worm from... Uh, two Dark Worms. I should have Pendulum a Dark... Uh, I should have Pendulum Summoned a Dark Worm from Extra and a Dark Worm from my hand. I should have used Backbang effect on the Jackal. I should have Attack over the Jackal. And then I should have gotten Evil Storm Exiton Knight and blow the board. And then I would have still have uh, two card cards left over. So... 
I didn't misplay. I would have had one, two, three, four. He would have had five. Like, I would have saved a Wisdom and a Curtain Razor. It was a huge misplay, and I can't believe I made it. I should have just, like, I'll show you what I ended up doing. Instead. I just ended up pendulum summoning everything. Uh, I don't know why. I did my, my math was wrong. I calculated my math very, very wrong. But Exiton Knight's a real big thing for Pendulums now, man. It's absolutely huge. Like, we have two crazy board wipes. We have a Synchro 8 and a Rank 4. That I just board wiped the whole board. Uh, Well, one just monsters. One complete board wipe. So, uh, it's something like a Last Resort type of thing. I should not have Pen Summoned the Wisdom and the Razor. I should have just Black Fang the Jackal attack. And then Exiton, I have no idea why I did. Absolutely no idea. Like, I, it completely baffled me, but I didn't want to take my play back. Because you shouldn't take plays back. But... Uh, so boom, we just blow up the whole board. Just tr and I did, uh, my reasoning was I didn't want Metaltron to get an ad uh, by Jackal, but it was horrible reasoning. That was my literally my reasoning at the time. I didn't want Met Metaltron to get an ad, but it was so stupid because uh, it was two cards versus one. Uh, by the main reason is I didn't want him to like. I was hoping his turn was gonna end. That's what I was, ho I was hoping he'd have no scales and his turn to end. But uh, it was a wrong play because I'd be level with nothing as well. But anyways, we're gonna live with it and see. Like, this is absolutely incredible, incredible game. Uh, there's a game state now. There it is. We just crash, crash into each other. Uh, he has a worm, so he can activate the worm first. Oh no, he has a. Yeah, he's gonna. Yeah, yeah. So he doesn't end his turn yet. I did draw. I drew desire. So it's like what a top deck, like the best top deck in history this time. Literally desires into no like a top deck desires no cards for pendulum is huge. So then he goes into the jackal. I bring a worm. I bring a zero. He's debating uh, negating the worm, but he doesn't. Uh, well, I had no counters anyway, so we can't, but I uh, then desires, boom, just like that. And what do I desire is harmonizing and chronograph. Like, that's like you couldn't have asked for anything better. Unfortunately, I uh uh destroy uh yeah, I banished the time gazer with desires, which is totally fine. Like, I literally drew two scales. Like, desires drew me two scales, like and, and dark room had me another. I got harmonizing, that's incredible. I don't use harmonizing the effect because Jackal has counters, so I simply just go into Omega. Omega attack the Jackal, Darkworm attack double Darkworm, and then, uh, yeah, so Omega attack Jackal, Darkworm die. Now, here's, uh, long term, I think this is a misplay, but in retrospect, it helped. Okay, so, I could have saved my Omega and brought a, pen, a Magician from my extra deck to my graveyard, so if I pen summon Oaf Dragon in the future, which I have Oaf Dragon in there, if I pen summon the Oaf Dragon in the future, I could have added it to my hand, because I had no Magicians in the grave, but... I was really thinking about doing that right away, but Omega, I, I knew that this was a zero, and I knew as a monster you could pendulum summon. I didn't want him to have a play, so I just Omega right off the bat, to, in hopes that his next turn, what, he didn't have a, a big play either. I think I should have done it in terms of the, the greater good of the long term of the duel, but he ended up just summoning a purple poison and passing. So... It, uh, it seemed to work out, but I, like look at that situation. I could have pen summoned an oaf right there and added wisdom to my hand, so it would have helped out. But it's okay. Uh, so we just continue on. We have a slot which is huge. We're gonna pen summon the two of these. Uh, just two high attack monsters. Uh, we're gonna omega right right away again. We don't want omega to die. Uh, and we're gonna hope. See, it's a Cerberus and a zero. We're gonna hope to hit the zero, but we hit the Cerberus. That's fine. Uh, we know that uh, it's a crash. We know that. We knew the slot was gonna die. That's okay. Uh, we just want to do damage because in the situation that the game was now, I had to do damage before next turn I could OTK him if he's a poison. So you have to do damage uh, as quick as possible in situations like this against pendulums. So because uh, it's such a one, like one harmonizing and I lose. You know what I mean? Like it's one card and it's done. One plus two card in pendulum and it's over for, for the other guy. So he, shrine, he gets a shrine unfortunately so it's good for him. Uh, brings out a level four. He has a few plays here. He has poison, worm. He's going to go into this card, which is uh, actually a really good card. It, you know, this this play here made me realize how good it was. Uh, and boom. Uh, we bring everything else back. We drew a, a Bambuku. We're looking at ways to OTK. And I'm like, you know what? We can't OTK. Uh, we can't get rid of him. Uh, so, you know what? We're just simply going to bore load. The purple poison in his graveyard is huge right now. Because he could fang uh, whatever I bring out. And poison will come out. So, we want to put Omega in the graveyard to bring poison back. And at Borlos. Now we have Borlos and that card. Uh, we're in a commanding situation right now. Uh, we should win this duel. So, Omega, we put the poison back because that would be completely game changing if the Omega, if he fangs something, poison destroys it. Like, it's completely game changing. We could lose the duel. So, uh, we get that at the end phase. We're in a commanding situation here. I understand he has Black Fang. In a commanding situation, he gets his card back. Server should be pretty useless here. 
Uh, all we need to draw is literally just a monster to pen summon next turn, and we win. Like a good monster, a level four. If we draw a level four, we win. Uh, just to make a rank four play, we win the duel completely. Uh, so he has Fang. He pen summons two. Uh, he activates. He wants Jackal to survive to negate something, obviously. Uh, so half that, and then uh, but then he he tributes some Cerberus. That was a little uh, questionable play. He could have just blocked Fang, uh, saved the Chrono Guard in hand, and special both both Chrono and Cerberus saving the Jackal. But I wasn't activate a spell regardless. Uh, so that's gone. Now it's Cerberus versus this. Janky was an absolutely horrible, horrible card to draw. Uh, at the moment, we look at an extra deck. We have no plays currently to destroy the Cerberus. Uh, we need a rank 4. Uh, we have no link plays to destroy a, a normal summon monster. Uh, we're missing a second Electrum really badly right now. Uh, or Venom or something. But we couldn't out it right now. We need to go two rank 4s or we need our, our toolbox of Pendulums. Uh, toolbox of magicians which we have no access to so we're like you know what we don't care we're gonna find a way we just we're gonna wait one turn he has no card in his high skill we're gonna wait a turn draw level four and win the duel it's that simple we just need to draw a level four and we win the duel so we're gonna wait we're gonna pen summon two cards we bring out a level four i would i should have brought out a sloth here okay if i brought out a sloth he would be forced to attack over it but we brought a level four because if he attacks this and we're left with a non-level 4. Next turn, our, our play will suck again. We just need a rank 4 to win the duel. So, we had no access to a level four, uh, a 2 level 4. So, we're like, you know what? We're not going to pen our whole hand out in case he destroys it. Uh, we're going to just bring out... We're literally just going to make sure that next turn, if we draw 4, we win the duel. So, that was the situation. We don't want we don't want to summon too many monsters. We just want to make sure the next turn, we could make a rank 4 play and win the duel with a, a high attack monster as well. So, that's what, that was our plan. We should have... It turns out that it screwed up because he drew Pendulum Call. What a top deck incredible uh if we brought out sloth or jackal maybe would it help it would be force him to uh, or, or even totem bear but totem bear would have been bad he would just attack but it turns out that our uh us playing very uh easy uh cost us the game because that pen call just gave him the harmonizing gave him four spells because the like what's the chance he has four spells with service he had the top deck literally only cards pen call because pet or desires but pen call into a high scale uh and then boom, he's gonna banish that a uh, pencil attack and he won. And I had to leave because gonna show us some friends and boom. So what a it ended in a tie is one one. What an incredible honestly, what an incredible game slash match. Uh that was pendulums for you. Like it was absolutely incredible. Uh that's just a, you know, I know th th this uh, whole match is hitting 30 minutes now, but I just want to show you guys more theory and more gameplay to give you guys more of an idea of how to play pendulums. A real idea and not just uh, doing whatever like just pen summoning randomly and as you see hand traps do not stop this deck uh you saw game one like you saw the first game uh ash yeah we played around any hand trap even if they ogred at the right and we still had two inter uh through two hand we still had two interruptions so hand traps don't do sh don't do anything man that was a duel that was a few duels make sure to like comment subscribe we're gonna be releasing more random pendulum gameplay just so you guys understand how to play the deck hope you guys enjoy the video see you in the next video peace